Hey lovelies, welcome to another video and yeah, I'm not gonna even comment on the playroom and the baggy t-shirts and maternity leggings because life. I will comment however on the fact that my hair has gotten really long. <laughs> but hey, anyway, I am extremely tired and I may be a little bit delirious, just a tiny bit. But I wanted to talk about going from one child to two because it's quite the topic. I feel that the initial thing, like when you're pregnant with your second baby and you're about to like go into labor, the number one thing you're worried about, funnily enough, is not labor, it's not what you're about to go through, it's not the new baby, it's actually your firstborn. <laughs> so it's actually the child that you will have to leave at home or wherever you have to leave them in order to go and have a baby. They're your main priority. It is the weirdest thing possible. I felt so so worried and stressed about Angel and no worry or concern in regards to like labor and delivery itself it was more so what was she gonna do and how was she gonna get along during the time that I was actually at hospital and at the time prior to heading to hospital I thought that I would be able to kind of go in and out so like maybe 12 24 hours tops I didn't think that I would have to stay in hospital I didn't think that it would turn out the way it did. Leaving that aside, my initial thoughts going from one to two probably start at that point where you're worried about your firstborn because you actually have to go and have another baby and you'll need to be away from them. And for me personally, I was always with Angel, so pretty much 24 seven. And having to go through this process, it was not easy, <laughs> not easy at all. Now, going to more, personal experience. Um, in my case, I had to have an emergency C-section. I had to stay in hospital for two nights. So that was Saturday and Sunday night. Uh, and this isn't including the fact that I actually went into hospital uh, oh, pretty much at like 1 a.m. on a Saturday morning, let's say. So technically Friday night, kind of, but not exactly. You get what I mean. So I stayed in hospital over the weekend and came home on Monday. However, baby had to stay in hospital until Thursday, meaning back and forth, back and forth in the hospital again. I suddenly found myself split between two babies, two children from the get-go. So what I mean by that, we, I had planned that when I left for the hospital, I would talk to Angel, I would explain to her that we were going to have a baby and mommy and daddy were gonna go bring baby home. She knew about the baby. She understood the general idea that a baby was gonna eventually come home. So I kept telling her that mommy is gonna go to the hospital at some stage and bring baby sister home. What I wasn't able to do though, sadly, was I wasn't able to speak to her before we left. So we left in the middle of the night. It was literally 12.30 midnight when we left to go to the hospital, meaning she was fast asleep meaning Angel literally woke up the next morning uh, with her, uh, I think my sister-in-law, my mom, my dad, like a whole bunch of people were there with her, but I wasn't there. Suddenly, for no reason and with no explanation, as far as Angel was concerned, I wasn't there when she woke up. So it really, really, really messed with her. She was happy to play and excited to see family and stuff. Like she was okay for like a large portion of the morning, she was kind of like, what's going on? Like, because I, I never left her, and even if I did leave her for small amounts of time, I would always tell her. So, the number one thing I think is that she was with my sister-in-law a lot of the time, and that was probably the only thing that made it okay for her, because she utterly adores her. <laughs> but um, the only thing was, I tried calling her on Messenger and video calling her, Oh, that was, that was hard. That was hard. I had already been through so much. So by the time she actually woke up and I was able to speak to her, I had already been through the entire process. Like everything had happened, uh, surgeries, baby was already in the special care nursery. I was in my room, unable to move and extremely emotional. It's just like, I hadn't even come to terms with what had happened. And I tried calling her and talking to her and she was just so sad that I was on the phone and not there with her. And I felt like I was so emotional, my hormones, everything was just... So I actually made my number one biggest mistake at that stage, which was 
not speaking to her. I kind of avoided calling her and speaking to her and that definitely made it worse. So I don't want to go into like full on detail about like every single day and what happened. The main thing was I was kind of avoiding talking to her. I still spoke to her, just not like probably once every, like maybe once during the day and then once before she went to bed, that kind of thing. Um, which then led to her, for example, waking up at six in the morning and crying and not being able to calm down. Maybe even later than that, like maybe like three or four in the morning or something. Because time was a weird thing um, for me. But I was sitting with the baby, my husband had gone home and he literally had to call me, uh, FaceTime me so that I can help him calm her down, soothe her and get her back to sleep. Because she just kept asking for me and she was a mess. And then Monday came around and I made the decision to go home because I knew Angel needed me. She was literally so upset and so sad and just couldn't understand why I wasn't there. She kept telling me to come home and I was just, I was heartbroken. Half the time she would be super upset and I would be crying and I would try not to show her that I'm crying and it was, it was a mess. So what then happened was I had to decide <laughs> to go home to Angel and leave my baby, my new baby, my newborn in the hospital. So I had to go between the two at that point. So I found myself completely torn between my two children literally from the get-go because at least when you have an uncomplicated birth and you're able to just have a baby and go home as, like as soon as possible you're then at home with both your children or you know all, all two three or how many you have but in my case with the two I would have been home with them both and that was what I had thought I would be doing like just sitting at home chilling with my newborn and my firstborn and Instead of that, what happened was I went home without a baby and she was happy to see me, but at the same time, she was kind of like, I don't get it. Like, I don't see anything like what. So there was no baby to show when I first went home. And then we kept on going back and forth to the hospital and I could tell that she was like worried and stressed about like, will they come back? Like, what's gonna happen? And I had to stay with one and then go to the hospital to be with the baby and then come home and be with Angel and then I was just, I was torn into pieces basically. Hello. 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 <laughs> okay. What you doing? You let, you let mommy film her video? No. Please. Video. Your video? Oh, it's your video. Okay. What are you gonna say? We yeah, are my camera. <laughs> Your camera? Alright. So I feel that the number one fear that I had, which was leaving her at home, leaving Angel at home and having to go have a baby, was kind of taken and just yeah. It was bad. Um and after that Angel was very she was different, she was completely different, completely just, she would play up a lot, she would, she just went nuts. And I feel that one of the main things was me not talking to her enough. Because two weeks later when I had to have my DNC, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a video, I will try and remember to link it, I probably will forget it. It's on my channel, it's just, yeah, you will, <laughs> one of my previous videos. But um, when I went in again, I had to take the baby with me. So it was me and baby in the hospital and Angel at home with her dad. But I kept calling her like literally every couple of hours max. I was on the phone to her and talking to her. And I was talking to her before she went to bed and I told her good night. And it was, yeah, it was a whole different experience. Now when it comes to the two children at home, so literally, leaving the traumatic birth to the side and going to the two children at home. I have to say, yeah, it's a bit of a struggle. A bit of a struggle. Wait, what I mean struggle. So, lovely. Lovely. Uh, a bit of a struggle in that I breastfeed. So naturally when I'm sitting and breastfeeding baby and sh an angel needs something, 
oh dear. <laughs> so I have to kind of always like, I, I had to learn slowly through trial and error that I needed to make sure that certain things were on hand, whether it was close to me and I could reach them or whether it was close to like, Angel's height, et cetera, and she could actually reach them. So things like treats and water, juice, um, you know, any other little things that I might need by my side in the event that she needs something. Another main thing where um, I struggle quite a bit I'm trying to do a video. Can you please wait? Yeah. Can you play with your dollhouse? Yeah, I got a ladder. Yes, you got a ladder. I can see that. Another thing that really, really made it hard for me going from one to two was that, again, breastfeeding and potty training. Because the time frame that it takes for her to pee herself is minimal. And I need to move fast. And the fact that I can't move fast if I'm holding a baby, yeah, that hasn't gone too well for my carpet. Yeah. Generally, I find having two children is, as baby gets older, is an amazing thing. It's amazing because I'm constantly worried about not giving each child enough attention. I'm always feeling guilty. Like the mom guilt is real. I constantly feel guilty that I'm not spending enough time with Angel or that I'm holding the baby too much or, I, 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 you know, it's just this constant guilt of not giving each child necessary attention. Like maybe I'm leaving the baby in her swing for too long um, because I need to like, you know, spend time with Angel. It's just... I feel that that's been the hardest part, but when it comes to the relationship between the two children, I feel like that makes up for everything. It's just the way she loves her baby sister, the way she just dotes on her, and that's a fire truck right next to me right now. Yeah, that's my life. So the way she just like wants to spend time with her and she, like Angel loves sitting in the same room with her sister. She might not immediately play with her like because she's a baby like there's not a hundred percent there's not much you can actually do but she loves playing next to her or being in the same room with her. Um, she'll kiss her and hug her and like just all these sweet little things that I absolutely love and Iris looks up to her in the most like utter love like she just adores her sister and I don't know how good that's gonna be when they get older and little miss is chasing after this one it's, it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun like I've realized a lot of things that I did wrong in regards to the whole preparing for the new baby hospital visit what I did while I was at the hospital but at the same time I don't think you can actually really like you never know how things are gonna go and considering you usually go best on your previous experience I thought my birth was going to be very straightforward. I did not see any of this coming. And naturally, I didn't know how to handle one and the other one just down here. So it's definitely a learning process. And you definitely need to give yourself uh, a lot of slack. Cut yourself some slack. Because the mom guilt is insane. And yeah, it's just not... It's not. I mean, today I went to enroll Angel in kindergarten. And again, even though I know it's good for her and she will love it, I feel super guilty because I'm like, I'm going to have one child in school and the other at home. What if she feels like I'm dumping her somewhere so I can be with the baby? Yeah, it's just, yeah. So that is more so mine and Angel's experience. I will say Angel definitely had a hard time during those that, that first week, that one week when I went in to have the baby and that one week after it. Um, it was not easy. Anyway guys, that is all for this video. I am so, so tired. I don't even know if I made sense. I hope I did. Uh, if you have any questions, you want any further explanations, leave a comment down below. Ask me anything you like. I am more than happy to answer. And yeah. I will see you in the next one. Bye.